Welcome everybody to Woodside Very Own Edition of Family Feud. Today we have two teams from Woodside High School. Each team send up one player from your team. Alright, we have Peyton and Jack. As you know in Family Feud, we ask a question, there are multiple different answers. You have to get one of them to get the points. The first question, please name to me a right, a right of a Woodside student that a Woodside student has on campus. Go, Jack! Yeah. The right to learn. Yeah, baby, you have the right to be taught at Woodside. That's what I love. That's 15 points. 15 points for Jack's team. Okay, our second question is going to be on student expectations. I need two players from each team. Come on. Here we go. The question is, what is an important expectation that the school has for its students? Go! Allison, what is your answer? Uh, not to cheat. Okay, that's a good rule. Not one of the answers on the board, as you can see. Your turn, what do you say? Respect everyone else. That is correct! Students should respect their peers and teachers! 25 boys for the team over here! Now, for round number three, I need one student from each team. Now this is this subject right here, it's going to be a little, it's going to get a little more serious, okay? We're talking about some of the disciplinary actions here at Woodside High School. What actions could result in expulsion as a punishment after the first offense? Go! What is your answer? Plagiarism? That is not an expellable offense on the first offense. Nobody got points on that round. Now, here, anybody else, anybody else on either team? No, not quite. <laughs> Any other answer? Go. Weapons. Yes! The use or possession of weapons on campus is a potentially expellable offense. We're now going to move on to topic number two. This is on the attendance policy. This is going to be a lightning round. You will have multiple questions. There's one answer to them, okay? If you know the answer, you slap it and then you say the answer, okay? Here we go, first question. Who can clear your absences if you don't come to a class? Your parents. That is correct. Ten points for Kevin. Now, question number two. How many days do you have to clear an absence before it becomes a cut? Kevin. 24 hours. No. A week. More or less, five days. Five days. School. That's a week, yeah, that counts as a week. That's a week, that's points for Austin. No, we cast seven days. Question number three. <laughs> how, how are cuts cleared? Uh, parents? That's a trick question. Cuts cannot be cleared. Ha, 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 ha. That's why I didn't want to do that. Nah, we did it. Question number four. How many tardies per period are students allowed per semester? Three. That's correct. And what happens if you get more than three? You get a detention. Or, He's the man. Yeah, I knew that. Okay, question number four. What attendance-related actions could put you on the no privileges list? Yeah. Uh, by getting enough tardies where you get a detention and you can't clear that detention. If you fail to clear your detentions after a tardy! I know how many days you have to clear your detention. <laughs> how many days you have to clear your detention? Yeah, five days. No, then you get put on no privileges. Kevin, you're the man. That's that's 30 bonus points yeah. right there. Yeah, but I answered the question. Yeah, baby. I answered the question. Yeah, you got it. 10 points. Congratulations whoa, whoa, whoa. to both teams. Now, head up to your back to your tables. Good work. Good work on the lightning round. The next, our next category is the dress code policy. This is going to be a little bit different format. I'm going to ask it. Anybody who presses the invisible buzzer on their table gets to answer the question. Okay. There are several potential answers. First question, what are examples of a dress code policy violation? 
What do you say? Uh, articles of clothing that have curse or profanity on them. That is correct! There's several more answers. And if anybody else has an answer, press the button. Over here, over here, what's your answer? Austin, over here. Uh, no wearing clothes that expose midriff. That's correct! Okay! Final answer, final chance to go for it. Uh, no shirts that influence weapons or drinking or doing illegal stuff. Yeah, that's, that'll do it. Yeah. The following category will be on electric device and cell phone policy. At what time are students allowed to use their cell phones? That's like, the wrong. That's the wrong answer. I'm sorry. Like what do you got? Recess. Um, brunch. Brunch, lunch, before or after school. That is correct. She answered all of the next answer. You get four for it. Good. We have two more questions. We have two more questions on cell phone and electronic use. Oh, Austin. So, Austin. See you again, Kevin. Now, say. You didn't use your, you were using your phone at a time other than when she said, like in class, and your teacher confiscated it. What is the way to get your phone back? Over here, Kevin. You have to deserve, you have to serve one detention. Final question on cell phones. What is an inappropriate use of a cell phone or electronic device? that could result in suspension or even expulsion. Awesome. Uh, using a phone to take pictures or video and test. That is correct. That's what I was going to say. 15 points for Austin. And you were going to Kevin. Take Austin, another answer. Uh, watching inappropriate videos during on school campus. That's correct! Any other answer? I've never seen anything like that. Okay, head Taking on Taking pictures of the teacher. That is correct! Woo! <laughs> Academic integrity is about honesty. It applies to homework, classwork, and tests. Cheating is a form of academic dishonesty. Examples of cheating include copying an assignment or test, Allowing others to copy an assignment or test. Using unauthorized resources during a test. Submitting the same assignment or presentation more than once without prior teacher approval. Plagiarism is also another form of academic dishonesty in which an individual submits or presents the work of another person as his or her own. Plagiarism exists when there is no recognition given to the original author for phrases, sentences, and ideas for the author incorporated in a paper or project. A portion of a document is copied from another author or composed by another person and presented as an original work. Examples of plagiarism include, but not limited to, the following. Presenting another author's entire work as your own. Copying a summary from another source and incorporating it into your own work. Submitting an essay or a story written by somebody else using another author's sentences or phrases without using quotations and or citing your source. With that, there are some consequences. The severity of the consequence depends on the nature of the policy violation and the student's disciplinary history. The teacher will determine the academic consequences per their syllabi. In most cases, the academic consequences will be a zero on the assignment. The AVP is responsible for determining any additional consequences, including detention, Suspension from extracurricular activities. Suspension if violation of ed code is determined to have occurred. Now please back to your tables. Our next question is on the alcohol and drug policy at Woodside. I need two players from each team. What are potential violations of this policy? Over here, what's your answer? Uh, selling drugs on campus. That is correct! Oh, yeah. 
Over here. Having alcohol on campus? That is also correct. Uh, going to class under the influence? Yeah. That is correct. Our next question. What are the potential punishments if they violate this policy? Over here. Revocation of said alcohol or drugs, uh, suspension, being arrested by an officer or some kind of police authority on campus, and then finally could lead to expulsion. That is 1,000% correct. All the questions, team. We are now moving on to the closed campus policy. What areas are off limits when a student is unsupervised? Over here. Everywhere. <laughs> that is incorrect. Any potential answers over here? The parking lot is one. Ten points if you get another one. Always during class. No, that is football field. Football field. That's one of them. Baseball. The baseball field. Tennis court. The gym. The gym. That's correct. Other potential answers could have been. The boys and girls locker rooms, any sports field including the pool, the performing arts center, construction zones, and neighboring streets. Our next question is on transportation and safety. Has anybody here taken the bus to get to school? You have? Would you come on up? Anybody on this seat? Kevin, you take the bus? What are examples of good behavior when you're taking the bus. Over here. Um, no playing music unless it's in your headphones. Good. Any other answers over here? No food. No food? Food? Yeah, no food. Um, I think. I don't know. Yeah. 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 No, no, yeah. no food. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. yeah. Any other answers? No vandalism. Yeah. No standing up or moving seat. Yes, that is correct. That was a great job, guys. Our next question, what behavior on the bus is prohibited? No violence. Yes. No yelling. Yes. No hanging on the rails and seats. And no going out the windows. Or arms or legs or head. No, no limbs out the windows. Our next category is medical procedures. We have two contestants here, Peyton and Austin. The question is, what is required for students to take personal medication on campus? <clears throat> a doctor's note and potentially also uh, a signed thing from a parent uh, that directs like why they're having this thing there. And clear it from the medical office at Woodside, or notification of that. That is correct, 50 points for Paige team. <laughs> Question number two. Can students carry unauthorized medication or over-the-counter drugs on campus? I want to say no. That is correct. Hey. Good work for both teams. Please, Bye, back Paige. to your table. We have one question on the student parking lot and driving regulation. Can I have one player from each team please come on up? What is required for a student to be a driver here at Woodside? Well, first they need to have like their license, you know, they have their permit for six months and they get their license. They've had all the driving hours needed. And they have to go to, I think it's the, I'm not sure exactly what the job description is, but you need to go get a parking pass form. You need to follow like the insurance, the car type, model, and then like get a parent signature, then come back and you get a parking sticker. So Good. Get... What? Anything else? What do you need if you want to drive your car to school? A car. A car? A car! You need a car! And you need that car. A registered to... car. Legally registered. <laughs> Our teams are tied up with 500 points each, and this final question will determine the winner. The question. Does anybody, do either of you know what the speed limit is in the parking lot? Five miles per hour. Five miles per hour. That is correct. This team wins. 